Welcome to the Sunday church service of Claremont Congregational Church. Just an announcement that Bible study will be as usual on Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the church and then again at 6 in the evening also in the church. The reading for today's service is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to 11. It will also be a communion service, so if you'd like to take part in communion, perhaps you want to press the pause button now and get um, some bread and some grape juice or wine. The hymn at the end of the service will be from Congregational Praise number 159, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let us open in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, our hearts are open to you. You know all our desires. We can hide no secrets from you. Let your Holy Spirit cleanse us so that we may love you to the full and live in a way that brings you glory. Because Jesus our Lord lives in us. O great and holy Father, whenever we grieve your heart, all heaven looks upon us in sorrows. For what we have done in stubbornness and pride, we do not deserve a place among the children of God. But now we admit that we were wrong, and that you in your love were right, and we take hope from the good news that you sent your Son to save us. O oh, Father, forgive us and enfold us in your peace and defend us by your Spirit because of what Jesus Christ our Lord, your dear Son, has done for us. And so, Father, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we praise you. You are our joy from age to age, and you are one forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers and sisters, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, Encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Amen. May the Lord bless this reading of his word to our hearts and to our understanding. And to him and only him be all the praise and the glory, both now and forever. Amen. The End Times the day of the Lord. These things have fascinated many for centuries. 
Some have decided on a day, and that day came and went. The sun came up, and then it set and nothing happened. The words of Jesus are clear. No one knows the day or the hour. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 36, the words of Jesus, But concerning that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. And then in verse 42 of the same chapter, Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Our reading from Thessalonians chapter 5 is instructive. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, unexpectedly. There will be peace and security, it would appear, and all will seem well, and then sudden destruction will come, like a pregnant woman, it's labor pains, says the Apostle Paul. She knows she is pregnant, but the first labor pain can come at the most inconvenient moment. And of course, in the Apostle Paul's time, they had no ultrasound, no scans. So you had no idea when the baby would come. There will be peace and security, they will say. And all will seem well, and then sudden destruction will come. I believe we may be moving towards such a time. A false sense of security, a new world order, everyone befuddled by their own sense of achievement, the politicians congratulating one another, the population of the world mesmerized. But then it will all implode. History has already given us a peak of that. Look even at our own present time. Remember in history the Roman Empire and then the Holy Roman Empire and then of course closer to home the British Empire of which we were a part. Where are they now, these empires? But we need not worry. This is for those who are in darkness. And we are not in darkness. For we are people of light. For we know the light, Christ. We have nothing to fear. We are not destined for wrath. We are destined for salvation. So whether we are asleep or awake, we might live with Him. We live with Him. And in order to live with Him, we need to have died to self. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the Apostle Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We have been crucified with Christ. We have risen with Christ. And to live with him, is to live with these realities. Therefore, what must we do? Well, the Apostle Paul says, we must encourage one another, build one another up, because we have a day that we are waiting for. Our Lord, He is a coming. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promises of your word. O Father, keep us in the light 
that we may know eternal blessings which we have through our faith in your dear Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come now to the communion part of the service. All those who, who love the Lord Jesus and know him as Saviour are invited to come to this table and join in the sacrament which makes them one in him. The Lord Jesus loves us all tenderly and graciously. Let us hear the Apostle Paul's words telling how this holy supper of our Lord began. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now let us do as Jesus did, recognizing that we belong to his body and humbly recalling the sacrifice he made for us. And so I take this bread and wine to be used for this holy mystery alone. As the Lord Jesus thanked his Father, so let us give thanks. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon us in these your gifts and make us share in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For, Father, we belong to you. Father, we offer ourselves to you. Make us one in your love and ask of us whatever you will. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread and he said, This is my body, which is for you. In the same way, he took the cup and said, This is the new covenant in my blood, which was poured out for you. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the death of the Lord until he comes. Let us now take the bread and eat together the body of Christ broken for you and for me. Let us now take the cup and drink together the blood of Christ shed for your sins and mine.
Let the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be ours. We read the final gospel. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Our closing hymn is number 159 in Congregational Praise, a hymn by Charles Wesley. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. For thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone, by thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. That recording was by St. John's College Choir, Cambridge, in England. And now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls us is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. <laughs>